Hi, welcome to Believe the Bible. Tithing seems to be a sensitive area with, with people. Uh, with believers who are really trusting the Lord and want to live for Him, uh, they look at giving as an integral part of the Christian life, and so it should be. We should be givers as believers. No question about it. No question about it. And it shouldn't be restricted to 10%. Uh, you can do 90%. So let me be on the record in saying that. that. But when it comes to the tithe, Paul refutes the tithe. And how does he do that? Well, we know that the tithe was a requirement. It was under the law. Once the law came, it was made part of the law. And so in the Old Testament and in the four gospel books, even Jesus condoned tithing. And so what does Paul do? He refutes tithing. This is the opposite of, of what Jesus taught about it. Let's read some verses. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, that was the law, necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. I don't believe Paul is taking giving down a level. It, it is giving it an option on the people that he's talking to because he says let and he says, purpose in your heart, that's an optional thing. It's not required as the law was. Because if you didn't do it in the law, then you were robbing God, he says in Malachi chapter 3. But let's read verse 6. Paul makes it clear. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. No, Paul wasn't minimizing giving by any stretch. But he was refuting the fact that a tithe was still necessary because tithe was under the law and it was a requirement. It was a necessary thing. So if you're still under the law, thinking that you're under the law, though no one can be under the law because the law requirements are impossible to do right now, if you still think that you're under the law and you want to tithe and you want to give 10%, well, that's a start, but that's not all of what the tithe was. The tithe was three different tithes and uh, to the Levitical priest, to the poor, and then for yourself in your travels when you went to Jerusalem. I don't know anybody who goes to Jerusalem three times a year and uh, gives of their tithes to the storehouse. If you want to call your giving tithing, that's fine. You're using a biblical term incorrectly, and I did it myself many, many, many times before I understood God's word rightly divided and the, and the terminology of what a tithe is, who it was for, and what its purpose was, and how much it was. But now we can know that a tithe is, is not in existence. We are to give out of our heart as we purpose in our heart, not grudgingly, you know, not liking it all, oh, yeah, I'm putting this in the, in the offering plate. <laughs> I hate doing that. No, that's not the attitude we should have. And not out of necessity. Uh, yeah, okay, I have to give this, this money, but uh, I'll do it anyway because I have to. No, but the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And if somehow you made it known what you were giving and it was, say, 3%, no one could fault you on that. That's not up to someone to fault you because what you purpose in your heart, if it's 3% or 33%, it's what you purpose in your heart. If you give sparingly, you're also going to reap sparingly. But we got to be careful with that verse, thinking that because we give, we're going to get. So just be aware, Paul does refute tithing because the way Paul explains our giving, the way it should be under grace, is contrary and contradicts the tithing method under the law. Hopefully you see that. Feel free to leave a comment. You have a good day. Take care.